Good morning friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options and this is the Morning Market Prep video for January 11th, 2024. Well, what happened to us last night? We had kind of an interesting um, switch last night. Everybody has decided to be bullish this morning. We've got um, Asian markets um, up, mostly up. The only the only South Korea was just marginally down last night, while we had the Nikkei continuing to surge higher, now closing above 35,000 for the first time since February of 1990. And then we even saw Hong Kong zooming back up 1.27% last night, while Shanghai, a little bit more modest, up 0.31%. European markets are also um, showing bullishness here this morning, except for the FTSE that's down only 0 0.07 at the moment here, and that's 5.30 a.m. Central Time here that I'm um, recording this video. So um, just marginally down, um, but everything, um, everything else is kind of cautiously um, up. We're not looking at really big moves here. However, U.S. markets are trying to be bullish this morning as well, pushing up. And as a matter of fact, um, we did try to take out the high on the diamonds this morning with a little bit of a pre-market push. Then let's take a look. We have oil this morning. Oil is up um, $1.25 a barrel and Brent crude is up $1.28 a barrel. Natural gas is lower this morning. We also have bonds this morning moving just ever so slightly lower here. The 10 year bond um, right now dropping back down below uh, 4%. So we'll want to be keeping an eye on that as that c occurs. Um, we could see um, things like uh, the dollar um, weakening. So watch that close. So what does all this mean for this morning? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I do apologize if my voice sounds a little bit weak. I'm not feeling all that great this morning, but we're going to get through this. Um, let's take a look at what we've got going on in these charts and try to remove a little bit of our bias and see if we can figure out how we're going to approach the market for today. Now, of course, today is the one of the big days. Today, we're going to find out what that CPI number is and we'll finally get that behind us. All of this choppy consolidation that we've seen here in the market has been pretty much a hurry up and wait uh, move until this number happens. Now we do want to remember that this number will come out an hour before the market opens. So whatever reaction the market has, we need to be thinking about what our next action is going to be. Try to avoid the knee jerk reactions because we've seen before we can get a number like this and we can move big and then we can absolutely reverse it and whipsaw. So be a little bit careful here. The first thing this morning, there's likely going to be considerable volatility. And we'll look at some of those numbers here in a bit or expectations here in just a bit. So looking at the diamonds, if we take a look, you can see here the pre-market. We tried to pop out here. Um, we had uh, 378.12 trying to break out up here and that would make the um, a new high here in the diamonds in um, that pop out. So if the bulls can continue to find that inspiration here this morning in the data, then let's look for, well, there's blue sky above here in the diamond. So truly anything is possible. We could move up pretty substantially off a nice consolidation level like this in the chart. So be prepared for that if the data is positive. If the data happens to disappoint, well, we've got a support level right in here. And I would suggest the first worry, if that data is bad, will drop down into this area of the chart. Failing through there is where it could get pretty painful here in the diamonds. We could drop pretty hard. Now, 
when looking at this chart, that doesn't look like all that much, but this would be coming back to that breakout high. And I'm gonna switch this really quickly to the Dow. And let me show you, if we were to drop from where we are right now, just down to here, we do have to kind of keep in mind how big a point move this would be. That's 700 points. So be prepared if that were to uh, drop pretty hard down into these levels in here, just to the bottom of that black candle, 700 point, I mean, um, 700 points are there. So we're looking maybe um, as much as a thousand points, just coming back to that area of price support right there. So with that in mind, plan your trading accordingly. If we get a bad number, um, we could really see uh, some pain here in the market and it could come in quickly. So make sure you're prepared for that possibility. I'm not saying that's going to happen, just be prepared. If we take a look at the SPY, SPY, also trying to break out here. You can see they've been pushing, pushing, pushing really hard here, particularly in big tech. The tech giants really squeezing to the upside here, and that's pushing that SPY up. As you can see, our high print right here was 477.55. And in the pre-market, you can see we hit 478.33. So they did technically break this out in the pre-market. Now the question is, will they be able to keep that going into the open of the day? Will we be able to punch on through this with our CPI number making those new record highs and have blue sky above? If they are unable to do that and the bears were to come back in, well, let's just notice there is, whoops, darn thing changed tools on me. You can see there's a little bit of price support in the chart right down in this area. So watch that carefully. And if that were to uh, give up, we lose that trend in here, then look for that possibility we'll pull back into this area of the chart. Again, that could be pretty substantial point move. So make sure you're prepared for that just in case um, we end up with a bearish number today. Remember the market has been uber confident that it is right that the fed is going to be cutting rates soon if that happens to disappoint and we and the market finally realizes or i shouldn't say finally but the market realizes that it may have been too overconfident you could see how this market could come down pretty quickly so make sure you're prepared for that possibility and don't be chasing everything along until we really start seeing uh, those bulls picking on up to the upside. And then if we look at, whoops, if we look at our QQQ, QQQ is also making that pop up, that gap up here this morning, trying to pump higher. And that will give us that S&P 500 um, all-time high breakout if they can do that here in the pre-market. Taking a look, you can see that the QQQ still has a little bit of work to do. Um, we would have to come just a little bit higher to make a new high in the market. But remember, we've already made new highs for the year. So this would be um, adding to those new highs. And there's every reason to believe that they're going to make that push happen, assuming that the data is good to them. So watch that carefully. If we pop through here, then it's blue sky above in uh, the QQQ. However, if the QQQ ends up being disappointed by the data today, then just kind of keep in mind, we've got some support levels down in here that we're likely to test. And this was a little bit more protection than we've seen in the other indexes, unless we break down through there. If we break down through there in a, a bad data point move, then just keep in mind, there's really nothing under here for price support until we come all the way back down into here. That would be a very painful move. Then if we look at our IWM, 
IWM continued to struggle in here yesterday and here again in the pre-market. They're trying to pop through that, trying to pump that through. And you can see right in here, this um, is still serving as resistance. And this is just that downtrend break. We broke above it, held it as support, and then went on higher. But now we have slipped back below that and we're consolidating underneath that level. So if the bulls find that inspiration today, this one's a pretty easy one. You can certainly see that possibility that we would pop through here and then start stretching up toward this area of resistance in the chart and maybe even up into here to test those recent highs. See if we can pop through there. If the bears, however, find inspiration, it's also pretty easy to see. It wouldn't be um, all that much of a stretch to see us dropping down through this price support, maybe coming in to test this longer trend. And if that were to fail, that possibility that we come on down, test this little area price support in the chart. Let's take a look at our VIX. Our VIX, as you can see, continued to fade here yesterday, slipping just slightly below that trend and slightly below this little price support level I've got marked in the chart. So looking at this chart, you can see if that if we happen to find some negative data in the CPI this morning, then we're perfectly placed here for that bounce and that little bit of a higher low here in the VIX. However, if that number is bullish as the market is expecting that it's going to be, then we would look for that push back down and possibly even coming down here to make new lows in the VIX because um, we are pretty confident that the Fed's going to be cutting rates soon and we could see that fear drop out of the market pretty quickly. So just watch that carefully. Now looking at our T2122, our T2122 indicator ended the day just right here in the middle of the range, pretty darn flat overall yesterday. And that's not to be, uh, shouldn't have been a surprise. All the conversation about choppiness as we wait for this number today, shouldn't have been that much of a surprise that we just kind of did a lot of chopping around, except for big tech, big tech continued to rise. Now, if you take a look in here, we're kind of in the middle of the range, which means that if the bulls are inspired today, we certainly have upside opportunity here in the chart. We've relieved enough of that pressure here in T2122. There's plenty of upside and we have about the same chance of a downside move. So this morning's number is a little bit like a coin flip and we'll want to remember that um, anything is possible here on the numbers. As a matter of fact, it's possible that we end up with a, a non-event that um, the it's not enough to get the bulls excited, it's not enough to get the bears excited, and it's kind of a non-event. And then we slip right back into this mode of chop as we wait for the PPI number and the beginning of big bank earnings reports. So remember, we've still got a lot of data coming our way after this number that could have that um, effect of market being a little bit I'm uncertain what to do next. And then if we take a look at our T2108, the percentage of stocks above the 40 day moving average, they were essentially just a tiny bit lower, a little bit flat yesterday. We did break a little tiny bit of support in here, as you can see that little support area in there, we did break that. But I don't see anything major here that's a problem. We were just way too frothy in the market. And it's rare that we can hold up here at all and, uh, for very long. And you can see that pullback just to ease that pressure. So if the bulls find inspiration, I think there's every reason to believe we push higher. Unfortunately, if the bears are inspired by that number, there is that pretty good chance that we can move uh, sharply lower here. That market confidence would be shaken pretty heavily that the Fed is going to quickly cut rates. And we could see some pretty substantial moves to the downside if the bears really got going. So just watch that carefully. We do have some major support levels down in here, but 
that would be a fairly substantial drop in prices. And then if we take a look at T2107, T2107 was flat and, and actually the surge right at the end of the day tipped that just a little bit higher. So nothing wrong here. You can see we held uh, these little support levels right in there. Um, so let's keep an eye on that. If the bulls find inspiration, every reason to believe we push on through, try to push back up and retest some of these highs. Now we will want to remember we're up in this frothy zone of the market. So we'll want to uh, just be careful with that. And if the bears were to find inspiration for today, there is some price support down in here. The biggest price supports down here. So if the bears really were to get going on some data that disrupted their thoughts of um, an early Fed cut, then we could drop pretty hard and fast. So again, just be prepared. If we take a look at uh, T2101, T2101 is about what was expected yesterday. Again, we see that breadth drop. Now, breadth could move big today, depending on how that data comes out. So if we see a good, strong, bullish move, we want to see breadth increasing on that move. And the same would be the case if it's a bearish move. We'd want to see that breadth increasing on that bearish wave of the market. So uh, just keep an eye on T2101. Let's take a look at our um, economic calendar here for today. Now our economic calendar, as I have been talking about this whole video really, is what comes next in the CPI. And that's really what everyone should be thinking. When the CPI number comes out, the unknown number is finally revealed what comes next. So think about how you're going to react to that number. What's your first response going to be, depending on whether it's a bullish or bearish reaction in the market. Keeping in mind, um, we're also going to be getting those jobless claims and jobless claims can also um, provide um, um, that energy for volatility in the pre-market. And if you're uh, last time, this came in pretty good, pretty strong. We continue to see jobs holding up well, but we're hearing every day more and more about companies laying off just a little bit. So watch that carefully. One day soon, we might start seeing that jump up in job losses, and that could bring out those bears just a little bit more. We got that natural gas number coming in. We've got bond auctions here this afternoon. We've got Barkin speaking. 30 year bond auction at 1 p.m. Eastern. And then we got a treasury statement and the Fed balance sheet, which probably won't move the market at all. We'll ignore it. And then we're go uh, going to immediately start thinking about um, what comes on Friday. We got PPI on Friday. We've got Kashkari and a bigger huge rig count that nobody's going to care about and we're going to have the beginning of bank earnings and we're all we've are here already hearing a warning today that citibank may miss because of some substantial losses that they have incurred so just keep in mind friday could be um, pretty interesting day of uh, bullish or bearish action in the market um, and I think anything is possible. If we were to take a look at that earnings calendar for today we don't have much going on. Um, the only true notable here today would be INFY. It's reporting this morning. It may have already reported here. Looks like we're trying to go higher in the pre-market on INFY. What needs to happen is break through that downtrend and hold someplace up here as a higher low. And then we've got more bullishness coming into play here on INFY. The reason I say that is we've broken this trend. We've broken support levels in this chart. So now get back up here on hold and then we can resume an uptrend here in the market on INFY. That's the only notable for today. There are a couple other reports, but uh, they don't really qualify as notable because they trade very small volume. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. 
but before we do that everyone if this is the the first time you've seen these videos if you could do me that favor and that would be click that subscribe button click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time i post a video and if you find these videos to be useful or helpful clicking that thumbs up button leaving a brief com uh, comment helps an awful lot it shows that engagement with the video and then it encourages the algorithm to share these videos with more people so thank you to everyone who does take the time to do that i truly truly appreciate it <clears throat> let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up and remember everyone these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security do your own due diligence make sure you're following your trade plan in your uh, tolerances to risk you should never ever blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas so first off um, yesterday I talked quite a little bit about that defensive sector um, uh, uh, and how strong that was and then yesterday we saw a little bit of pullback in that sector nothing broke down um, per se we, we held support levels but there was that big strong bullish move and then we reversed it yesterday on a lot of those stocks so we'll want to watch that carefully again nothing really broke down they still held it in there pretty solidly if we take a look at coke it held in there fine it just didn't get that follow through here in the chart so i would keep a close eye on a lot of these stocks they still have that opportunity if we get that bullish inspiration here in the market um, they could move um, right on through to the upside um, stocks like hershey um, popped through and this that had popped through that 50-day moving average and now notice it's just coming back to test it as support certainly a bearish engulfing candle something to be concerned about um, but I would watch here if this 50 holds and turns up and we find that price support in there off that 50 look for that next opportunity here in Hershey so a lot of good opportunities in that defensive sector still setting up but we may have to be just a little bit more patient for them. You may also want to be taking a look at some of the other areas here in the market that are starting to show a little bit of concern. Take a look at Tesla. Tesla breaking down here and going sideways. And there was a story out last night that BYD, um, it's a Chinese manufacturer of EVs, has... Um, uh, kind of bested Tesla in sales at least numbers um, becoming the number one EV um, uh, manufacturer out there and there was um, not a downgrade of Tesla but there was a substantial Bernstein put out a substantial upgrade saying that um, BYD would be best of class in this uh, with a big upside opportunity so keep an eye on this if tesla were to break this area of price support right in here that could be a bit of a concern here and we could see that turning and selling off to the downside so watch that carefully here on tesla um, we also have you guys know i've, I've mentioned starbucks um, a couple of times this week starbucks continuing to fall in that downtrend here in the chart now it's coming into some price support down here but if we get some bearish news today look for that to move on down um, testing those levels in the chart so keep an eye on that the reason i'm bringing these up is i just want to remind everyone that there are two sides to the market the market can go up it can go down so be willing to look at both sides of the market now also take a look at JCI Now JCI is holding in here nicely we broke this price support but notice we kind of came in here and grabbed onto that trend and we've been climbing up that trend here in the chart watch that carefully if that can hold up here above this support level Look for that next opportunity for Johnson Controls to maybe push on through to the upside. I do think it is worth um, keeping an eye on 
um, international paper showing lots of strength here on the daily charts. What I really like on this one more than anything, notice this is a giant downtrend break, is maybe a little bit longer term position on this. These don't typically move really fast, but they are great trades with good dividends. Um, and if you're interested in something like that, international paper looking pretty darn good now. Notice our trend is still out here, so don't be too surprised. Remember, on a long-term chart, it can take a while for that to develop. So we may still have a little bit of resting in here to, to go on international paper before that takes off. It could take off early, but watch that closely. Uh, pretty interesting looking chart there on the daily. As I mentioned, uh, Coca-Cola, take a look at um, Monster, Monster uh, uh, Beverage here. Nice little bullish pattern here in this chart, popping up, breaking through some resistance here in the chart, trying to follow through yesterday. So watch that carefully. Any rest or pullback would set up an opportunity. You can see our trend out in here someplace, maybe a little bit of rest, and then look for that opportunity for that to push on higher. Gilead really has been zooming here lately, but pulled back just a little bit um, yesterday. Notice we got down pulling back. We're, we're dealing with this resistance area in the chart. But notice we haven't lost any ground in here. We did pull back. We're still holding support. And if this trend continues to act um, as our support in the chart, that little bit of resting in here may be just what you need to get a lower risk entry into a stock like Gilead. So watch that one carefully. Um, other things that you um, definitely want to be keeping an eye on is take a look at Walmart. Now, this could have substantial moves. You know, if we get a bad data point here today, this could pull back pretty hard. But as you guys know, I've mentioned this earlier this week, popping through this area of resistance here and that opportunity that this could fill this gap um, in Walmart. Now, I don't know that I would want to chase it um, being um, stretched away from our last area of price support, but any kind of rest, any kind of pullback here in the chart, I would look for that next opportunity to the upside. And just keeping in mind, you've got plenty of time before those earnings come out. So watch those closely. So with that, everyone, there's a few stocks for you to look at today. By and large, what I want to suggest is be very, very careful and cautious here in the pre-market. And shortly after the market opens, we'll get that knee-jerk reaction of the market and then be prepared for that possibility of a whipsaw. I don't know if you guys remember this, but still very clear in my mind, we had, it's all the way back over here, a CPI report that came out and we had that big knee-jerk reaction to the upside. This was a CPI number. Popped up hard and then we dropped really hard after that and continued to fall breaking down through here. So remember that first knee-jerk reaction can sometimes be a false move. Just be prepared for that. Don't try to rush in the second the market opens. Give it a moment to see if that's really uh, the direction of the market. Now, it, it all depends on how that number comes out. If that number comes out super, super strong, then it may be just fine to, to follow in right after the market opens. But if, if we move big on a number that just doesn't quite make sense, pause, hesitate just a little bit before rushing in to a trade. Protect that capital today. Be careful, everyone. And remember, tomorrow we'll jump right into a PPI number and the beginning of those big bank earnings reports. So be prepared for that. Be thoughtful about that. Try not to overtrade heading into uh, Friday's numbers. And remember, Monday is off. Monday, the market is closed for Martin Luther King. So once we get through Friday, we're going to be um, into a three-day weekend. 
and well, we all know what three-day weekends can do. They can obviously create any uh, thing in the market. So think about your positioning heading into this weekend. How do you want to carry that through? And remember, when we come back Tuesday, we're going to start hitting into more of those earnings reports, and they're going to start ramping up. So expect that volatility to ramp up with it. So with that, have an awesome day. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for listening. I do appreciate it. I want to wish you all the very, very best. I'll see you right back here bright and early Friday morning. Take care, everyone.